Hello. In this session, we will uh, discuss about the different types of Elastic Block stores that we have. So, in the last session, we uh, looked at an introduction as to what is your EBS, right? So, EBS it stands for Elastic Block Store, and this is one of the storage option that we have for your EC2 instances. So, this uh, provides you with a block level storage, and you can use this as a root device and uh, we can store any kind of data you want on this block storage now under this depending on the use case and depending on the performance so it also provides us with different different options that we can choose from depending on the applications that we are going to run so in this particular session we will uh, look at what are the different types we have and uh, we'll also understand where we can use them once again before we start off with the session please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so uh, we know that your EBS it provides us with a block level storage and we can use this with our EC2 instances. So whenever we launch our virtual machine or the EC2 instances, uh, we will need to specify the block level storage. And uh, this is basically used to store your data, any kind of data you want. So we can use this EBS volumes as a root drive, right? So uh, if you're on your Windows machine, you can think of this as your C drive. And if you're on the Linux machine, it's your root drive. So we can use this as a hard disk and we can store any kind of data uh, you want. It could be your application logs or any scripts or your application itself. We can store it on this block uh, device. Now, when we talk about this EBS, uh, Amazon uh, provides us with different volume types under this. So we have the general purpose, which is our SSD storage. We have the provisioned IOPS, which is also a SSD storage. Then we have the cold HDD and we have the throughput optimized HDD. So these are the four options that we can choose from uh, in this EBS volumes, depending on the use case and depending on the requirement. Now, let's look at each of these uh, one by one in detail. So we'll, we'll first look at your general purpose SSD storage. So your general purpose SSD storage, again, it provides two options under this. We have the GP2 and then we have the GP3. So these are the two versions that you can choose from within the general purpose SSD storage. So here, whenever you're launching your EC2 instances, so let's see the option so this is one way when you are uh, launching your ec2 instances here under your configure storage you can um, go to advanced and we will uh, let's see yeah so here you should be able to see the option so you can see this volume type these are the options that you can see so you have the general purpose ssd gp2 and then you have the general purpose ssd gp3 so these are the two options that you can choose from now uh, this provides us with a balance of price and the performance for a wide variety of transactional workloads so if you are having a transactional application which does a lot of transactions for us then we can go with the general purpose ssd storage so these volumes are ideal for use cases such as your boot volumes like your uh, where you can store your os related uh, uh, information medium sized single instance databases uh, your development environments your test environments for all these purposes we can make use of your general purpose ssd storage so with your gp3 we get uh, 3000 input or processing per second and if you're going with gp2 we get uh, somewhere between 100 to 3000 uh, input output processing per second all right so this is your general purpose ssd storage then we have the provisioned IOPS SSD storage. Again, under this, we have two types. We have IO1 and then we have IO2. All right. So these are designed to meet the needs of intensive uh, input output workloads that are sensitive to storage performance and consistency. So you know, if you're very um, uh, con concerned about the storage performance or the consistency of your data, then you can go with the provision IO. So again, under this, you get two options. You have the IO1 and then you have the IO2. Now, uh, they provide a consistent IOPS, which is your input output processing per second rate that you can specify when you create the volume. So the advantage of this is if you're going with your provision IOPS, you can specify your consistent input output processing per second. So you can specify how much of input output processing you want and your EBS volumes will provide that uh, consistency for you so this enables us to predictably 
scale to tens of thousands of IOPS for instance. So we can predict how much of IOPS you want and accordingly you can specify that and your EBS volumes will provide that IOPS for your EC2 instances. So if you're going with IO1, you can start with 400 and if you're going with IO2, you can start with 4000. And again, depending on the option that you're selecting here, your cost will vary, you'll have to pay accordingly. All right, so that's your provision IOPS. And then you have your throughput optimized. Now this is your HDD. So provisioned IOPS and general purpose is provides you with SSD storage, solid state disks, and your throughput optimized is a magnetic storage. So this provides us with low cost um, magnetic storage that defines the performance in terms of throughput rather than IOPS. So here we don't have IOPS, rather we have throughput and these are your magnetic storage. So um, these volumes are ideal for large sequential uh, workloads such as Amazon EMR, ETL applications, data warehousing applications or any log processing application. So you know anywhere you are dealing with a large amount of data where you have to do a large amount of workload then you can go with your throughput optimized. So here if you see this is my throughput optimized and uh, uh, you don't have any IOPS uh, available with this. This is um, in terms of your throughput. We don't get IOPS with this. Then we have your cold HDD. Now this is also your low cost magnetic storage and this is also your HDD storage. All right. And here also your uh, performance is uh, defined in terms of throughput and there are no IOPS available over here. So basically we don't have your input output processing uh, in the cold HDD as well. So more or less your throughput optimized and cold HDD, they provide uh, the same thing, but there's a difference in the cost and uh, availability of your data. So these volumes are ideal for large sequential cold data workloads. So basically uh, your, uh, there's a latency with the data availability under this. So if you need infrequent access, so you know basically uh, you won't have frequent access to the data. There is a latency associated with the data. You'll have to retrieve the data to access it. So if you're looking for infrequent access uh, and if you're looking to save some uh, money, then you can go with your cold HDD. So uh, the main difference between your throughput optimized and cold HDD is that with your cold HDD, you have infrequent access, which will help you to save some money. But both your throughput optimized and cold HDD are your magnetic storage and both provide you the performance in terms of throughput. There are no IOPS associated with that and both are HDD storage. All right. So these are some of the options that we have uh, when we talk about your EBS volume. So once again, you have the general purpose SSD storage under that we have your uh, uh, GP2 and GP3, then you have the provisioned IOPS, under that we have IO1 and IO2, you have the cold HDD storage and we also have the throughput optimized HDD storage. So this is the one option where you can um, um, see the, the uh, options, the volume types that you want to choose. In the upcoming sessions, I'll also show you the other way that uh, you can look for this volume types. So that's basically um, an introduction to the different types of your uh, EBS volume types that we have. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.